Hello and welcome to my latest feature video. In this video I'm going to be covering some additions to uh, Slow FX, um, New Rack and uh, Strummer FX. I'm also going to go over um, the different ways of recording Strummer FX into something like Cubasis and I also want to go over how to record automation using Slow Mo FX. So let's start with Slow Mo FX. So as you can see here, I've got a version of Strummer up and running and we're running through Slow Mo FX. And I just want to start a little arpeggio going and uh, give you a demonstration of um, engaging Slow Mo FX on that. Now, what you'll hear here is that uh, we'll, we've captured a buffer of X number of beats long and that buffer's been slowed down and repeated indefinitely. Um, but we have a new mode and that mode is called time slip and the time slip function is a real time mode that is continuously capturing incoming audio and then um, ditching certain amounts of that so as you see here I've got it on one beat so it's capturing a beat throwing a beat away capturing a beat throwing a beat away and it has to do that to actually run at half time but it's a nice effect that can keep up with my chord changes uh, in strummer Now there's one point of controversy here and that was how this um, plugin is supposed to work. Um, it has a what looks like a power button but it's really an on off button for the effect. And I, th I think this led to a source of confusion since uh, the uh, effect disengages itself once the, uh, the host transport stops. So people were expecting to be able to engage this and leave it on. But the idea is really to use uh, automation to turn it on and off throughout your song as and when you need it. So let's look at an example of how to record automation in something like Cubasis. Now here I've got a copy of Digistix with a little pattern running. And I'm passing that audio through slow-mo effects as an insert effect. And I want to record me turning on and off the effect. So the first thing you've got to do in Cubasis is turn on the read write for the automation. That is very important. Then we just rewind and play back the transport. You don't have to be recording here. Now we just engage and disengage effect, effect where we want. Finally turn off the write automation and leave read active. And when we rewind and play back the transport you'll see that it will engage and uh, the uh, slow-mo effects at the relevant points. Now that's the way I recommend and any recorded automation will appear here under the automation section. As you can see here for the on off button uh, you can manually edit this if you wish. Now while we're in Cubasis, I'd like to go over a few ways of recording MIDI strummer into Cubasis and the recommended ways to do it. In this case I've got MIDI strummer loaded as an instrument and as you can see the input mode is just set to the default. Now as you can see I've got host sync turned on too so when I start recording in Cubasis uh, it will actually sync up with the tempo and as I change chords here you can see that the actual chord data for each of the pads has been output to Cubasis and recorded within the track as separate notes. Now if we rewind and play back now you'll see that these MIDI notes actually pass through to MIDI strummer and we hear them play in the current guitar sound font but you could equally make that uh, play anything you like. Now in this second example I've still got uh, MIDI strummer loaded as a MIDI instrument and this time I'm going to record a strumming pattern in but I'm not going to do it by pressing the pads. I'm going to change the input mode to uh, piano to guitar and use the Cubasis MIDI keyboard to play in piano chords. Now you should have noticed that this time round it's just recorded the chords I played and when we play this back it actually converts these chords to the complex arpeggios in real time within Strummer itself. 
So you've got two ways there, and it depends on what you want to do with it. If you want the MIDI data, or you just want the chord data to drive MIDI strummer. Now in this third example, I'm using MIDI strummer as a MIDI effect plugin on one of Cubase's own default instruments. And what we can do is use it to generate the MIDI to drive practically any other instrument that takes note data. So let's give this a go. Now please notice that in this mode, uh, what's recorded is what we played on the MIDI keyboard. That data is passed through MIDI strummer which creates its complex output which is passed on to the Cubasis instrument. But at no point is that complex output recorded uh, to the MIDI track. Now that allows us to use the MIDI track as a remote control. And there are lots of, uh, of remote control notes uh, which are documented in a help file which allow you to remotely change pad or variation or start and stop the sequencer and so on. Okay, now let's turn our attention to new rack because there's been some nice uh, changes and additions here. Um, and the first thing I want to go over is the new improved MIDI mixer. So as you can see here in AUM, I have a new rack loaded as a uh, MIDI processor and I have an instance of MIDI mixer loaded. And you'll immediately see if you're familiar with this, we now have a mute uh, per track and uh, some other buttons which I'm going to go over and as you can see here I have them uh, linked up to um, AUM's uh, transport and as I adjust the uh, uh, volume pan and mute settings they uh, change the corresponding settings within the track within AUM now in order to use this facility you've got to make sure that the particular tracks on AUM are taking the MIDI input from new rack and that the uh, relevant uh, fader pan and mute um, knobs are all taking input from the correct place. But one thing I want to go over quickly is how to set those up within uh, new rack's uh, MIDI mixer component. Um, obviously I'm using AUM's default settings there, but how do we set up the settings within uh, New Rack? Well, the first thing we do is go into Interface Builder Mode in Edit Mode and click on the items in question. And then we can go into uh, MIDI Mapping from the Options button. Now, once I'm in this MIDI Mapping uh, settings, I can click through the various components and see what is assigned to uh, each of those items and change them if required. Now obviously in this case I'm actually controlling AUM's transport but you could quite easily use this MIDI mixer to control uh, any component within any other uh, app or plugin or control parameters of, of an external synth and so on. So it's a very useful component and it's had some very very nice additions. Now if you noticed on the right hand side of the MIDI mixer there is two extra buttons, a snapshot and a reset button. Uh, and these are just above the output slider. And what we could do with these, we could set up the MIDI mixer to be kind of a default setting. Uh, so maybe at the beginning of your song you might want to set default values. And then when I hit the snapshot button we'll be asked whether we want to snapshot the current settings. Now at any time I can press the reset button, um, I'm just going to move these some of these settings around, hit the reset button and we can um, reset back to those default settings at any time. So it's very useful when you're rewinding to the beginning of a song for instance. Now if you saw my last video regarding new rack updates you'll remember that we added a MIDI recorder. and. So to just to extend this uh, demonstration, I'm going to add a second instance um, of new rack with a MIDI recorder. Um, now the MIDI recorder is able to record and playback MIDI in time with the timeline of the host. So whatever comes in at, at a particular point on the timeline will get played out at a particular point on the timeline. Now I've got both of both of these instances of new rack loaded as. Uh, uh, MIDI processors and I'm just making sure that they're both taking input from each other because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewind the host transport to the beginning 
I'm going to arm record on the MIDI recorder and I'm going to hit the reset button within the uh, MIDI mixer. Now, if I stop the MIDI recorder, you'll see that there's some recorded data there. And if we were to reset the uh, MIDI mixer settings, rewind the host's playback and press play, you'll see we immediately get um, that dump uh, at timeline position zero. Now that was without the transport running, so everything was logged at MIDI beat zero. But let's start the MIDI transport running and record some automation from the MIDI mixer. So I'll adjust the fader and the pan and uh, we'll have a go at playing that one back. So once we've got some data in there, I'll press stop on the MIDI recorder, press stop and rewind on the host transport and play that back. Now hopefully if you, everything went okay when we play back we should see everything animating as expected. So you can use a combination of these uh, dumps and, uh, and recording of uh, automation during a song to this MIDI recorder and use that for automating a session. Now of course all this MIDI data recorded is stored within the session and can be saved out as part of a module preset. Now anyone that's used uh, the previous version of MIDI Recorder will have noticed there's an extra button at the end there called Dump. Now if I press this Dump button it will actually uh, send all the MIDI data within that recorded buffer instantly without the host transport needed to be running. Now those that have played around with the MIDI Pads module will know it's quite useful for um, triggering things remotely. Uh, the problem was that you had to press it and when you release the button, the uh, it would immediately turn off. There was no way of actually toggling the setting. Well, if you go into MIDI mapping now and you enable the toggle button, um, it will actually honor that toggle button now and you can use that to toggle things on and off. So in this instance, we're using the note on and note off data to toggle the mute within AUM. So the last thing I want to do is go over one change we made to pattern automation. So in this example, we've got a version of Chameleon running, taking its input, MIDI input from uh, new rack. Now I'm going to add a pattern automation module, which traditionally used to send its output, not via MIDI, but to another item within the rack. So you can randomize a set of events or edit them to your liking. You can have up to 32 events. But if I just play this back now, it will do nothing because it's not connected to any other module or any other uh, control anywhere. So to demonstrate that, if I add a second item to the rack, something like a, a chorus module, um, we can then uh, hit the assign button and root that output to the mix knob of the chorus and if I now re rewind the host transport and hit play you'll see the uh, mix knob animated. Now that's just one way of using this pattern automation now. Um, there is another way. If we clear the uh, automation here, the existing automation, uh, and we go into interface builder uh, with the graph highlighted and go to MIDI mapping, we can assign uh, that to note automation and just hit save. And the great thing now is that uh, because all that MIDI information is going to Chameleon, when we hit playback, we get random notes within Chameleon. And we could quite easily have used that to send CC data instead of note data. So that just about rounds up the video today. I'd just like to say thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.